Welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Mathematical Module in ComSol Multiphysics. In relation to this particular series, we have been talking about heat conduction or unsteady heat conduction equation. We already covered the physical significance of unsteady heat conduction equation. We talked about the physical significance of thermal diffusivity and today we will be covering solution of this particular equation employing ComSol multiphysics. So the purpose is not only to show you how to solve this equation with ComSol multiphysics rather we will try to characterize the solution we will try to look at the features of the solution. So we will be utilizing ComSol in order to understand the heat transfer equation in a better way. So let us initially go to the mathematical module so we'll be going to mathematical module coefficient form pd is and then time dependent because we are working with unsteady heat conduction equation now once you go to the interface let me work in the domain of centimeter and let me initially take the material so any conducting material we are taking so we have been working with copper this is a conducting material now we come to this equation that is the coefficient form PD so here you can see in coefficient form PD you have all the options you have second order time derivative term you have first order time derivative term you have this particular diffusive term or the Laplacian term you have the convective terms yeah you have additional source terms so the ultimate idea is you have all the terms available based on your requirement you will be keeping the terms or you will be omitting the terms so how you will be omitting the terms so you can see in with all the coefficients you have a constant if you want to omit the term just put that constant as zero that will be omitted. If you want to retain some term then put the appropriate value of this constant and that will work. So this is not only constant this can, this can be a function of the dependent or independent variables so that way also you can utilize suppose you have a non-linear equation and you want to put the non-linearity by utilizing those coefficients so that can be done and that is why this particular name is given that is coefficient form PD where you can play around with the coefficient. So initially whenever you work with any differential equation in ComSol then what you need to do is you need to look at the units it's like we have been talking about the heat equation so if I have the slide yeah we have the slide so you know the heat equation is this so this has del t del t term so the unit will be so the unit of temperature by time so it will be kelvin per second right so that concept will be utilizing here so what we can do is we can change this unit as a kelvin per second and if it is Kelvin per second, then you can see. Oh no, sorry, this one is the unit for the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is your temperature, so that has only unit of K. But the constant, if you see, it is asking for the source quantity unit. So what is source quantity? Let me check it. So this is the source quantity. So it will have an unit of whatever is there in the left hand side. So from our equation we can see we in the left hand side we have Kelvin by second. So the source term is nothing but Kelvin by second. So what we will be doing will be changing it to K per S. So once you do that all the units of the coefficient will change. Interesting, interestingly you can see this is the diffusive term or the Laplacian term you can see divergence of 
grad u that will give you the Laplacian operator so th this is nothing but the grad square t term so in the one dimension from the grad square t you will have this term in two dimension you will have this term so we are now working in two dimensions so grad square t basically means this second order space derivatives of temperatures now let us yes let us finalize the equation so we don't have this term in our equation so what you can do is ea can be zero so it is automatically zero we don't have any source term here so what you can do is we can make it zero which term we need we need this particular term and this da should be one because we don't have any coefficient here you can see we don't have any coefficient here but here we have a coefficient alpha and that will be with the Laplacian operator so we'll also be putting this this one so this c is nothing but this particular one so you can see here so the unit of c what will be the unit of c so you can see there is a negative term so if you this is in the left hand side if you take it in the right hand side so there will be no negative term it will be c laplacian of t so it is more or less equal to this you can see in the left hand you have this term in the right hand you have this laplacian term so what you need to do you have to replace c by alpha that is the heat diffusivity and you know heat diffusivity has an unit of meter square per second so we have equal unit so this is justified that we have written our equation properly because it is asking for the heat diffusivity whose unit is meter square per second so it generally remains in this order 1 e minus 4 or arbitrarily i am taking a value now my equation is more or less defined let me check all the coefficients so i am keeping this da equal to 1 I am keeping this C equal to this and for your purpose if I show you all other terms are by default zero like alpha we don't need alpha here so it is zero convection coefficients beta we don't need it so it is zero here we don't need any flux source F or gamma so this is a flux source term so this gamma so this is again zero so all the things are maintained appropriately now let me take the geometry so we take a very simple square geometry say this is the geometry now very common things we will be doing we will be working with the Dirichlet equation as I have mentioned in my earlier video that this two walls will be keeping at a constant temperature say at 298 Kelvin and the other two walls will be kept at two different temperatures suppose this one is the higher temperature say 400 degrees and the, the bottom one we take another Dirichlet condition we use this and this one is say kept at a lower temperature say 250 Kelvin now what happens you know you have to do the meshing let me work with extra fine mesh this is perfect now I click on compute so it will solve for the heat transfer so this is how it looks like so let me just try to understand so these two walls had, had in a, a similar temperature this was at higher temperature this is lower temperature so what's happening heat should be flowing from those portions to the portions where initially we have less temperature now in order to understand the temperature distribution what we can do is we can take cut lines so you know how to take cut lines so we'll be going to data set we'll be taking cut line 2d so let us take a vertical line and a horizontal line and let me check what's happening so a vertical line will be 0 y equal to 0 to 1 and let's say at the middle we want to take so this will be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 centimeter so here this is the vertical line so let me rename it 
just for understanding i rename it vertical line so this is done let me take another horizontal line so what i'll be doing is uh, y will be say at the middle 0.5 and 0.5 x will be moving from 0 to 1 yeah this is it so again let me rename it i rename it to horizontal line so yeah perfect now what we have to do is we have to go to result right click on it and you have to you have to take 1d plot group so in 1d plot group also let me rename horizontal and vertical for understanding purpose so vertical plot i rename it under the vertical plot you have line graph let us take another 1d plot group and let me rename it to horizontal plot horizontal plot again right clicking on the horizontal plot taking line graph now in the vertical plot the data should come from the vertical line so I name it vertical line in the horizontal plot also the data should come from the horizontal line so I am taking horizontal line so in the line graph we have this yes uh, one more thing let us solve it for a less amount of time because we know heat transfer is a faster phenomenon and uh, we try to solve it for say up to 0 0.01 second so let us run it again so if I solve it for lesser time, so I will get a better distribution and a better understanding of the unsteady nature. So if I go here, you can see this is how the temperature is varying and in the, this is in the vertical direction and this is in the horizontal direction. So let us increase the time a bit let me work up to 0.1 second and yeah interval also i'm changing yeah we'll start characterizing the solutions but before that yeah this is the case now initially let us look at the horizontal line so what's happening in the horizontal line you can see yeah the legends if i put and see or the best thing is let me take it from list one by one if I take the values it will be plotting for the values say 0.2 I plot 0.3 I plot 0.4 I plot yeah up to this so you can see this is the 0.4 so once the time is increasing so this way time is increasing initially the temperature was this and then gradually the temperature is changing and it is showing this distribution so along this way the time is progressing so now we can have all plots so you can see gradually it is becoming this so in the last class what I, what I told is at both the ends we have maintained a temperature of 300 degrees so the distribution could be like this or like this that I have already mentioned and it can oscillate also so we'll look at when exactly it can oscillate but for the time being what we are doing is uh, we are looking at how the distribution is changing and we can see that it's a kind of I mean this kind of distribution and with respect to time it is changing now if you look at the vertical plot the vertical you see what's happening it was initially at a higher temperature the top one it was at 400 degree and it is reaching up to 200 so this particular so this is the time axis progress so ultimately the distribution is like this so this is a kind of exponential decay 
However, this will not be pure exponential decay because this is a two-dimensional solution. So, temperature at each point will be coming from the contribution of the vertical gradient and the horizontal gradient. So, in both the directions, we have gradient. So, temperature at every grid point will depend on both the gradients and that is why this is not purely exponential at the same time, this horizontal one, it should have been like a kind of sinusoidal distribution, but this is not appropriate sine wave because it has some contribution from that exponential decay also. And that's why you never get a genuine sinusoidal or a genuine exponential decay. So this is one of the characteristics. Now, I will complicate this particular thing. So how we can complicate? So now what we can do is instead of here, I mean, this particular one was at a higher temperature. So instead of making a constant thing, we can put a distribution, a sine wave. Say 400 is the maximum and then we can put sine, it is 2 into pi, uh, pi is pi by lambda. Now the lambda is here 1 centimeter. So what we can do is we can make it 1 centimeter and then we can multiply it by x we can have a frequency of say certain frequency so i guess this should work i don't know whether yeah this is uh, this is not showing any yellow error so this is appropriately or what I can do is, I can take a function. It's okay, you know, because I have already mentioned, so it is appropriately taken. From the distribution only, you can understand. So again, I am running the simulation. So now it has a kind of sinusoidal distribution. So you can see, this is how it is distributed. So what we can do is, instead of 10 frequency initially let us take a low frequency is so a 5 so that we can look at it appropriately yeah this is how it is distributed now let us take a vertical line along this and see what happens Suppose this was the horizontal line. So this horizontal line, we want to look at somewhere at 9.95. So let us plot it. So yeah. So see, this is how the temperature is varying. So that day I told like, if this one is 300 and that one is 300, so, in between, you can either have this kind of distribution, this kind of distribution, or you have sinusoidal distribution. Now, when this oscillatory nature should come? Oscillatory nature should come when you have an alternating temperature like the way we have shown here. Yeah. So, this is a kind of oscillatory boundary conditions. And I was also talking about the Fourier series. What I was talking about, if you have any kind of function for your temperature representation, that function can be expressed as an infinite Fourier series. So this is a very simple function, an appropriate sine wave, but the real life is not that much easy. So you cannot get an appropriate sine wave, but still why we are taking a sine wave? Because Initially, we should look at the problem by taking small, small and easy examples. Once we are okay with easy examples, then what we can do is, then we can complicate the situation. Now, what we can look at is, let us gradually change the horizontal line. Let us go to the bottom. Suppose I look at a point, say point 0.8. I just want to see 
how much the contribution of this oscillation alive so i'll talk about it so you can see what happens when i go to point where it is point 8 so you don't see any kind of oscillation now let me go to point 0.85 You see little bit of undulations right so what's happening you have an oscillation at the top and the contribution of oscillation gradually gradually dying down in an exponential manner because what's happening here is you have a gradient different gradient along the vertical direction so let me make it 0.9 so you will see more oscillations here yes you can see this way it is changing now what happens if i make this temperature somewhere here so it is oscillating from i mean what i can do is i can make the temperature of this two zones down say this is i made this i want i'm making 150 and let's see again <coughs> sorry So you can see <coughs> the oscillation is still alive here now let me go to 0.8 it will die down at least somewhat it will be yeah so now let us look at what's happening in the vertical plot so you can see in the vertical plot so what was there it was 240 and the other one was whether it was at zero why it is coming to zero let's check yeah this one is at higher temperature and this one is 250k okay so in the vertical plot where is the vertical plot let me okay okay it is becoming zero why because we have a sinusoidal distribution no so at the top we have a sinusoidal distribution and because of that the i mean if you see yeah so what you can see is at this point the temperature is somewhere very less temperature near, near about zero and that is why at this point say 0 0.5 and that is why it is it is like this so if i just change the position say x position i am changing to 0.45 then you will see it will not reach up to zero because the temperature is different now so yeah you can see yeah from 250 it is is, is it is like this so from this particular lecture what we have understood if you play around with the boundary conditions your heat transfer as well as the temperature distribution will drastically change and can you imagine how difficult it would be in order to have an analytical solution for that however we have an analytical solution for this particular equation and to understand this analytical solution we need a detailed concept of Fourier series we need a concept of orthogonality we need concept of separation or variables separation of variables or combination of variables so we'll be talking about both the topics so heat transfer equation in 1d unsteady state that can be solved by separation of variables or it can be solved by combination of variables so in the upcoming lecture we'll be talking about both the things and we'll be continuing with this heat equation in this console series apart from that we'll start another session where we'll be 
only talking about the equation. We will not be talking about COMSOL multiphysics. So today I stop here. Meanwhile, I request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you.